Hello and welcome to GameSat. This week we're going to take a look at six different platformers on the NES and the Sega Master System. That's exactly right, and I'm going to take a bet and say that the NES games are going to be way better than anything that the Master System can show. Oh, come on, man. We all know the Master System has some good platformers. Well, Mike, and you're going to have to prove it, but as of right now, I don't think any of them are as good as Wizards and Warriors. <laughs> well, let's see. Wizards and Warriors is a game by Rare. Remember Rare? Uh, maybe? The company that used to make fun games until Microsoft bought them? Oh yeah, I remember now. Basically, they disappeared after the N64 days, right? That's the ones. Anyways, this platformer is a decent game. It sports some decent graphics and some decent music, which some of you might remember. The control for the most part is decent, and it's fairly easy to get where you want to go with a little effort. Jumping from platform to platform can be tough, but after a couple tries, you can easily make it as the control gets more familiar. I didn't know that knights in full armor were ever known for such impressive jumping abilities. The problem here is the game has enemies everywhere and they are super annoying and never leave you alone. Litter throughout each level is food and potions which help you live longer, but more often than not you will be dying. You have infinite continues and you always start off exactly where you die, which is actually very nice. To get to the end of the level and face a boss fight, you must first collect 100 gems. These are scattered throughout each of the levels, just laying around or in treasure chests. It's never a problem to find 100 gems, and there is probably at least twice that much in each level. Throughout each of the levels, you'll find keys that will open doors of the same color, which will lead you to more gems or more helpful items, and the door to the boss fight. The game isn't super clear on where you need to go to find the boss fight, but with a little searching you will find it. The levels aren't overly big, so you won't get lost. Hey Dave, I'm not tremendously impressed by the graphics and sound here. And yes, I hold you personally responsible since you're the Nintendo super fan. That's fine, Joe. You know, I'll take that responsibility. You know, this overall is a decent platforming game and is super challenging, so be sure to have your stress ball handy as you will be squeezing the crap out of it. Alright Joe, well I know that Wizards and Warriors might not be the best game out there, but it's still got to be better than what the Master System can produce. Oh come on man, no way. In fact, if I want to play a game with a sword, I want to play a game like Kinsaiden. How about Lord of the Sword? Oh hell no, did not help. No, no. <laughs> Alright, well you know what, just show me Kinsaiden and let's see what you got. Alright. Kinsaiden is an interesting entry into the Master System lineup. You play as some ancient Japanese samurai and you go around cutting up enemies with your sword in ancient Japan. Why does your character look like he's pulling an invisible tractor? I mean, it really looks like he's being held back as he runs. Yeah. You know, it's kind of similar to Wizards and Warriors in that the enemies just keep coming at you and sometimes they can overwhelm you. You traverse through the stages and earn new abilities and stronger powers. See? Thou hast learned the art of jumping high. Yeah, because that's exactly how samurais in ancient Japan talked. As the game progresses, you can choose your stages on a giant map of Japan. Some stages are training rounds where your goal is to make it to the other end without touching anything pointy. This can be pretty damn tough, let me tell you. I'm often told that I art but a novice. There are 16 stages, but you don't need to go through all of them, but if you jump ahead, you'll be missing critical abilities that will help you. The boss fights are really fun, but if thou hasn't learned thy correct skill, you'll find them nearly impossible. <laughs> Joe, your old English is really, really good. You should work for the Renaissance Festival when it comes to town. Shut up, Dave. The graphics are great, especially for a game with only two mega power. There are a decent amount of backgrounds, but what's pretty unusual for an 8-bit game is that the main character is large and he has distinct right and left sides. That means his sprite isn't simply flipped when he faces the other direction. I love that kind of detail. You know, I really did like the graphics and the size of your characters and enemies. The music is pretty good as well, with several Japanese flavored themes and some great boss music.
a must-have for your Sega Master System. Joe, how about we stop messing around with some samurai action and go right to full-fledged ninja action? Oh, what, are you gonna show me Shinobi on the NES? I think I can beat that one. <laughs> no, sir. I'm going right for the kill. I'm gonna show you Ninja Gaiden. Ooh. Ninja Gaiden is another good platformer for the NES. A fairly large game with 20 levels, or acts as they're called, this game has some awesome cutscenes for its time. Actually, you know, they are still kick-ass today and really help bring a good story to the game. This game is unbelievably hard. That's what she said. <laughs> it is true. Um, anyways, you will be dying a ton and I do mean it. I guess this is how you got your money's worth back in the late 80s. Developers made games super hard so you couldn't beat a game in just a couple of sittings. You had to work at it and learn all the patterns of all the enemies and bosses to really get good and go far. In reality, you will actually be lucky to beat this game at all. It's still worth playing though, as it is a fun game. And it's completely different from the arcade as well, which was a rather dull beat-em-up. It's one of those instances where the home version on inferior hardware is the better game. I'm sorry, did you just say inferior? Yes, I did. Don't say that about my beloved NES, Joe, you jerk. Anyways, it has really good control, level design, and some decent music. It's a typical platformer with tons of close jumps and enemies to hinder your way. You can jump back and forth between walls to get to higher areas. While on walls, you cannot attack, which makes it tough going. You have a katana as your main weapon and can pick up sub-weapons and magic like throwing stars or even a fire wheel. You can use these as long as you have spiritual strength. Wait, so atheists can't use sub-weapons at all? Well, if you could select one, probably not, but you can only choose Ryu when playing this game and he's as spiritual as they come. Anyway, despite its difficulty, it's still a must-have game for any serious NES fan. Okay, Joe, let me guess. You're gonna respond by showing me the Master System version of Shinobi, right? Well, well, I could. I really could easily, but I thought I'd show something that, you know, not a whole lot of people have necessarily seen. I'm gonna show Ninja Gaiden, the version of it for the Sega Master System. What? Yeah, that's right. There was a version of Ninja Gaiden for the Master System. Let's take a look. Ninja Gaiden on the Master System was released only in Europe. Another brilliant decision by Sega of America. Yeah, indeed. It isn't a port of any other game, but rather its own unique game. It has its own unique story, stages, and elements. At first glance, the action seems very similar to the NES installments with the wall bouncing and the flipping and stuff like that. You also have sub-weapons which you can use by pressing up an attack as long as you have enough N, which I assume stands for Ninpo. And lastly, a super attack was added which hurts or destroys every enemy on screen except bosses, but costs you a quarter of your life bar each time you use it. Oh my god, that's gotta be a tough choice there. Well, not really, you really don't wanna use it. The action is pretty fast paced and it's very challenging. Maybe not as difficult as the NES versions, but it's still not something that's tremendously easy. The graphics are kind of a mixed bag. Some stages look really good and others look maybe a bit bland. The characters themselves look better than the average NES game for sure, but still aren't anything to brag about really. The music is alright I suppose, but it's certainly nothing fantastic. Yeah, the NES version definitely has way better music. There are eight chapters overall and the stages aren't super long. There are cutscenes as well, but they don't have any animation at all and they're really kind of boring. Still though, not a horrible game, and one that they definitely could have tried harder on. Well Joe, I'm gonna have to say that the NES version definitely won that paddle. You know, I'm gonna have to agree, but come on, the Master System version isn't, you know, horrible or anything. Oh, no, no, god no, not by any means, it's actually a pretty fun game. All right, moving on. My last entry is going to be a game that pretty much defined 8-bit gaming, platforming, anything you want to say on the NES. What's you might it? have heard of it. It's a little-known game called Castlevania. Ooh.
Castlevania is the first game from my most favorite game series of all time. I simply love Castlevania. This isn't my favorite installment, but it's definitely no slouch. It really has no rivals in my eyes. This game has a really good pace to it. Some might think it's a bit slow, but I don't. That's because your brain only runs at 1.78 megahertz. Oh, you be quiet. It gives the player time to soak in the surrounding graphics and listen to the incredible soundtrack. The graphics are very good for an early 8-bit game. The levels are full of color and the whole theme of the game is really attractive. I really like how the doors got a flicker as you walk past them. Poor, weak NES. Hey, come on, man. This game has tons of great enemies to fight against. I mean, who doesn't want to kill Dracula and all his minions? Well, I don't. I mean, what did he ever do to me? He's always been a great neighbor, always offering to babysit my animals and whatnot. Am I just supposed to pick up a pitchfork or a steak just because he's unpopular? Of course, man. It's Dracula. You gotta kill him. All the great horror movie creatures are here from bats, crows, and ghouls to mummies, Medusa, Frankenstein, and even death. The game control is really good. There are a few things I would change, like the ability to change direction during a jump, but all in all, the control is great. I'd like to have the ability to jump off the stairs, but I can forgive that since this is the first game in the series. If you let even one enemy get past you without killing it, you might be in huge trouble and your life will quickly deplete as more enemies appear on screen. The music in this game is so good you might actually enjoy it more than the gameplay itself. I found myself struggling with this thought before, but I always come to the conclusion that you can't have one without the other. I listen to the soundtrack of this game on a regular basis and will even find myself humming some of the melodies from the game when I'm not even thinking about it. This game is one of the reasons I became a Nintendo fanboy back in 1987. Castlevania is a damn fine game and one of the best platformers of that generation. <laughs> you got that right, buddy. Too bad the Master System wasn't awesome enough to get a version of it for itself. Well, that had more to do with Nintendo's illegal monopoly than anything else. But still, that didn't stop Sega from ripping it off completely in a game called Master of Darkness. Hmm, show me. Master of Darkness is the Master System's take on Castlevania. <laughs> Joe, I already told you Castlevania has no equals. Well, maybe so. This game never came out in the US, unfortunately. You play as a psychologist named Ferdinand who gets messages on his Ouija board about evil which is spreading throughout the land caused by Dracula. Ferdinand, huh? What a great name for a character. It's no wonder he's not as well known as Simon Belmont. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Ferdinand takes to the street to perform his own kind of justice on the monstrosities of Dracula. It starts out with the worst weapon in gaming history, a pocket knife. It has next to no range and is extremely weak. He can get more weapons like a sword or what appears to be some kind of sledgehammer, but nothing with the reach of a true Belmont whip. Anyway, the influences of Castlevania are obvious, from the stair steps to the floating things that drop items. You can also get sub-weapons like a gun, a bomb, or a boomerang, and these are activated just like they are in Castlevania by pressing up and attack. The game is fairly tough and you can get sent way back if you die and it gets frustrating very quickly. The graphics are pretty well done for an 8-bit game of this nature and as usual they look better than an NES game. Oh, this stage seems kind of familiar. Is there anything that the developers didn't rip off from Castlevania, Joe? Yeah, the music. The music in this game is just absolutely nothing special at all and it's quite repetitive to boot. <laughs> you aren't kidding. The music in some of these stages just drones on and on and on. Ugh. Yeah, it's definitely a downfall. Is this game worth importing? I thought it was, but it's more a curiosity than an actual quality game. But if you like Castlevania, it's definitely worth owning. have it folks that is every platformer ever made for the 8-bit generation without exception uh, actually no uh, the show was running a little bit long with all of them in there so I had to cut out about maybe 872 different games and series 
Oh, well, you know, that's actually kind of cool because that means we can revisit this topic in the future. Yeah, indeedy do. See you next time. Yeah, Joe, you know, I thought that was a pretty good episode, uh, you know, because Nintendo came out on top like they usually do, but, uh, you know, I'm not a dirty guy normally, but I could have played dirty and brought out one of the best platformers ever on the system, and that would be, you know, Mega Man 2, you know, this game right here. So, what would you have done for that to counter this one from Sega, huh? Oh, that's right, nothing. They don't have anything this awesome. <laughs>